So, good afternoon to you, colleagues. And despite the very high speed of uh, oncology development, um, analysis of the statistical data shows that we have ever-growing prevalence and uh, morbidity among men. The most um, prevalent pathology among men in uh, this country is prostate cancer among men, which rates second in terms of prevalence in um, in terms of prevalence among other cancer diseases. The mean age is 69.5 years, and despite the very active screening programs, nonetheless, uh, as well as the d development of diagnostic uh, modalities, nonetheless, advanced and local regional cancers uh, grow in prevalence. I uh, should say that the main methods of treatment is, uh, are first of all, radical prostatectomy uh, or hormone and radiotherapy. This principle of treatment is applied not only in Russia, but also in other countries of the world, which uh, the most important guidelines state. The latest data uh, coming from the uh, outstanding authors uh, show that radiation and hormone therapy uh, is not inferior uh, to um, uh, uh, prostatectomy in terms of uh, outcomes uh, such as relapse-free and overall survival. So can we spare surgical treatment? I should say that wide application of such methods as conform beam uh, therapy as well as stereotactic uh, tactic, uh, radiation therapy as well as combination of fusion radiation therapy allows us to escalate the summary dose in the tumor. Thus, it uh, allows us to have better efficacy as well as um, uh, better um, quality of life and high conforming type of treatment. But the toxicity of such treatment is still a question. So we ask uh, um, ourselves whether we need to irradiate also the uh, unverified, unconfirmed uh, lymph nodes of the lesser pelvis. Also, we escalate the dose and we um, expand the, the volume of irradiation, uh, whether it is really reasonable and mandatory in certain cases. According to certain authors, and according to literature uh, source, uh, sources, uh, sometimes extending the volume increases the risk of toxicity by four, um, um, uh, fourfold. And uh, we also um, observed uh, clinically significant toxicities in uh, patients with irradiation of the lesser pelvis lymph nodes, and as well as the GI toxicity was significantly higher in the same cases. The, uh, late toxicities and um, adverse events, uh, these literature sources uh, relate to uh, problems in planning. There is a topical uh, question, whether we need actually to uh, also irradiate, uh, page, uh, irradiate lymph nodes which are not verified, uh, which do not have metastasis or uh, um, tumor cells in them, uh, in a preventative mode. Despite the fact that we have great number of uh, retrospective studies, we don't have a clear answer to this question. For example, in the um, most well-known retrospective uh, study, which was conducted by a Society of Radiation Therapy back in 2003, uh, we uh, observed uh, increased relapse-free survival in patients after irradiation of um, lymph nodes in the lesser pelvis, as well as no antivent chemotherapy. But in these particular cases, the toxicity of such treatment was significantly higher. Also, we should pay attention to the fact that in the renewed review or updated review of the same uh, study, they received no statistically significant um, uh, relapse-free survival, uh, difference in relapse-free survival, but the toxicity uh, remained at the same plateau. Uh, quite high. Uh, in the same, uh, or in, in another uh, RCT, uh, which was um, conducted in five years from then, uh, also uh, clinically significant toxicities were demonstrated of such treatment. More to that, in a well-known uh, guideline by NCCN uh, dating back to 2015, in patients with high risk of progression, 
they recommended also radiation of the um, pelvis minor lymph nodes uh, preventatively, but starting from 2017, uh, the guidelines just recommend to look at uh, such opportunity. Thus, the literature sources analysis does not allow us to have clear-cut answer about whether it is reasonable to perform such radiation. Thus, it is still quite a disputable issue how to um, determine the volume of a radiation. And uh, um, more to that, there are no guidelines, no recommendations about the combination uh, radiation therapy, because we apply here two methods of treatment. That means distance uh, radiation therapy as well as brachytherapy in one uh, patient. Trying to answer this uh, particular uh, question, uh, we looked at the preventative irradiation of pelvis minor and comparing with the treatment outcomes as well as the uh, irradiation complications in patients with high risk uh, in uh, high risk of progression groups in combination uh, therapy. So we uh, uh, plan to enroll um, not le uh, not fewer than 100 patients. Uh, first stage is conform distant radiation therapy in uh, conventional fractioning up to 44, 46 gray. In two weeks, or two three weeks, uh, we initiate the second stage of uh, uh, brachytherapy. Uh, using gamma med equipment, uh, 15 gray single time. All patients are subdivided into two arms, so uh, irradiating, uh, preventative irradiation of lymph nodes in the pelvis minor and without. Uh, patients are subdivided into two cohorts and they are randomized by uh, bl blinded uh, envelope method. Uh, also, we are going to assess quality of life, tolerability profile, as well as the uh, long-term results or outcomes of treatment. At the moment, full course treatment was finalized in uh, 58 patients of high and uh, very high risk of progression. The uh, absolute majority of patients uh, have uh, over 15 percent of um, uh, just uh, of leaf nodes uh, uh, irradiated and uh, acute toxic reaction were uh, observed more frequently in patients where irradiation was applied. And uh, mm, first uh, degree uh, was observed in uh, just even uh, number of cases, but in the uh, group of patients without irradiation, there were uh, radiation toxicities of second degree. And after combination therapy, we also observed an episode of constipation uh, on uh, continents of um, uh, um, urine, urine continents. And uh, at the moment, uh, only 61 patients received full treatment over 60 months um, ago, which allowed us to uh, assess long-term uh, outcomes, treatment outcomes. You can see late uh, toxicities of first uh, degree were actually observed um, uh, both in the upper and the lower uh, urinary, urinary tract. At the moment, we lost two patients. Uh, for uh, the cause of death was not uh, related to prostate cancer and treatment. Uh, progression was observed in two cases. In one of the ca in one of uh, the cases, there was local relapse and progression into periaortal uh, lymph uh, nodes as well as bones. And in another case, in uh, a patient from a group without uh, lymph node radiation, there was progression in bones, bone met metastasis. Quality of life assessment was uh, uh, done by PACT PEM questionnaire which allows us to assess quality of life uh, from different perspectives uh, of uh, from different perspectives we are going to continue our reports on this study thank you for your attention